Hello and welcome to 7 Tips and Tricks Level 200 or Intermediate Level. So this is my favorite 7 Tips and Tricks at Level 200. And if you haven't seen the first video, which was Level 100, it should be floating somewhere up there. Um, so watch that one. And this one, we're going to go through 7 new Tips and Tricks. And the first one, one of my favorites, is insert a chart. How do you insert a chart very quickly? Well, basically you select the data and you go Alt F1. Alt F1, a simple shortcut, uh, a brilliant shortcut. So Alt F1 is a shortcut for creating a chart. And now I'm gonna give you a free one. How would I add this column to the chart? Right? It's got these two already in. And now I know that I can drag this, right? But if I drag it all the way so that I include column two, I'm also going to include column four. And I don't want that. So how would I include column two? Well, I could, I'm not going to do it, but I could just put this in between column one and three. If you don't know how to do that, watch the first video. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do may surprise you. I'm going to select this. I'm going to go control C or copy. I'm going to select the chart and I'm going to go control V or paste. And there it is. Right? I love those two tricks is in, in charting. It just, it helps you. And one more thing. So Alt F1, it creates the chart for you, right? Well, which chart does it create? Well, it creates a chart that is the default chart on this Excel. Now, if I wanted to, you know, another chart to be default, I would have to go to my chart. Um, so chart types, which would be here and select the one that I want and make it a default chart, right? And the way you make a chart default, you right click it and you say set as default chart. Now you could also do it like this. You could change this chart until it was exactly what you wanted. So you could add things, take things away until it was exactly what you wanted. And then you could save that chart as a template, right? So I could right click and say save as template. And then that chart would appear over here in my templates. And once I had that, I could right click it and set as default. And then Alt F1 would create charts looking exactly like I want them to every time. Okay, number two, paste as value trick. So this is a rand between function. So it's random, random numbers, and it's gonna recalculate every time, right? If I press F9, it's gonna recalculate, it's gonna recalculate, but sometimes, we don't want the functions. We want just the values. We don't want it to recalculate. And how do I get to that? Well, the long story goes like this. You go control C, so copy, and then you go to the paste, so home and paste, but you go to the drop down in the paste and you say paste as values, right? Or you could right click it and then find paste as values over here, but still, you would use paste as values. But what you could also do, and I love this one, is you would select this. You would go to the edge of this range. You would right click it and then go, just change the focus. Do you see how it's, I'm just shifting the focus and you only need to do it once. So you, what you would do is you would right click it and just change the focus and then release the mouse. And there it is. Copy here is values only. I click it and there it is. There are values now. So if I just go back, there were functions. I go here, right click it, hold the right click, just shift focus, release it, copy here is values and now there are values. Brilliant. Okay, next one is summary statistics. So if you're doing analysis in Excel or if you're doing statistics, 
This is one of the most brilliant commands because it really gives you for a column, it gives you all the data you need. So I have several columns here from A to E and I would really want to know something about those columns. So what I can do is I can select them and then I'll go data, data analysis. And from this, I'll pick descriptive statistics. I'll go OK. Now, the input range is this. It has the labels in the first row. The data is grouped by columns, so that's all OK. And now what I want it, I want a you know, new worksheet. But what I want is summary statistics. That's what I want. I'll go OK. And there it is. So what's brilliant here is for each of the columns, this is for column A, this is for column B, and this is for column D, let's say, I have all of the statistics right here. So the mean, the standard, so let me just do this. So standard error, median, mode, standard deviation, all of them right there. It's a brilliant thing if you think about it, how quickly it does it, right? So this, one of my favorite tools in the analysis tool pack right there. Um, if you don't see data analysis on your data uh, ribbon, you need to check the analysis tool pack add-in in Excel. Analysis tool pack needs to be checked. Um, basically, it's the Excel add-in that comes with Excel is just sometimes not turned on by default. Okay, next one is sorting. Now, sorting this, right? How would you think this would sort? It's got A's that are capital, ones that are not, and then it's got some of these, and how would this sort, right? If I just say sort A to Z. Well, it sorts like this. There's one of these, then there's one of these, then there's one of these, then there's one of these. It's like, it's like it doesn't even recognize uh, the case, right? And indeed, it does not. So one of my favorite tools uh, or tricks to use is if you wanted to recognize this, of course, you could go Power Query because Power Query does. But if you don't want to, if you go data and sort, so if you select the sort command, I love the sort command because it gives you this. You can say sort by column one, all good. But then you can go options and you can say, and I want the sort to be case sensitive. Okay, and okay, and there it is. That's the only place in Excel where you can make it so. And, and it's brilliant, it's brilliant. So sorting like with this command, brilliant. Okay, next one, data validation. Now data validation is one of those uh, what I'm about to tell you is very useful, but you could also use it as a, you know, a tool uh, just to be the biggest kidder in the world in Excel, or people might hate you, you'll see. So I had a cell here where I should input my IQ, okay? Now, of course, at this point, I could do 300. Let me do that, no problem. But then I could also say, well, in this cell, let's do some data, data validation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow a whole number. And it should be less than 100, right? That's all I'm going to allow, a whole number less than 100. So over here, I could do 80 and it would let me. But if I did 150, it would say, oh, that, that's not, that's not okay. Well, the problem is, you see, what it says is the value doesn't match the data validation restriction defined for this cell. Well, you yeah, know, okay. Um, and basically, it sort of gives away how you did this, but it also, it's not such a strong thing, right? Um, and now what you could do is you could go data validation and then you could go to error alert and you say critical error, the computer will restart 
in two seconds. Now, some people even go, the C drive will format in two seconds or something like that. Uh, if you go, okay, what I just did is if I now make a mistake, now it's gonna say critical error. The computer will restart in two seconds. Now that's much better. Uh, and it really freaks people out. Now you could also do some useful stuff with this, right? But, and the one thing that not many people know is you can also change the style of the alert. And that doesn't just change the icon of the alert itself, right? What it also does is it lets you continue. So it will, it did say, look, that's not part of what we agreed to, but if you press yes, you can input that in there. Whereas if I left the style as stop, it would never let me. So that's a cool thing to know. Okay, now next we go to the Alt key. Now Alt key, uh, not many people use it and I, I did a video once, and I'm gonna link it up there, um, of, I think it was seven shortcuts using the Alt key because it's it really, it doesn't get the love it deserves. Now remember how I inserted the chart? It was Alt F1. Um, so there are several things that you can do with the Alt key. Well, and here's one more. So if I was to press here and started moving this around, Right, what am I doing right now? Well, what I'm doing is cut paste, right? If I release it here, it will go there. If I press control while I'm dragging, I'm actually doing copy paste. If I was dragging and press control and then press shift, I would insert the copied cells in between those two cell, uh, those two columns. But then with control and shift, I could also press Alt and then I could do this. So if I press Alt and I'm just gonna select the two. If I now, I'm not pressing anything. Could I go to the data validation? No, I could not. I couldn't even select it, did you see? But if I press Alt, now I can shift between my work sheets and I can drop it right here. And now I can even choose, I'm not even pressing Alt. I just need it for the switching between the sheets. And now I could press control and it would paste a copy in here. And I could also press shift and it would insert a copy between those two cells. There it is, right? So control, shift, alt, all brilliant. And the alt key was the one that allowed me to drag something and drag it to another work sheet. Brilliant thing. Okay, and now the last one, flash fill. Now, I did this as part of the video for the AI. Um, I just, if, if you weren't watching that, so this is something you should know, right? So I have this and what I want are only these numbers. So that's what I want in here, right? And if I did it with a formula, let me just show you this because I think it's kind of poetic. So if I went mid, start with this text, that's the easy part. And then I would go row of indirect of take one, this, and then add len of, oh, something went wrong there, add uh, len of, and now I need to go over here, there, 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 and one. So all I did up to here is I took this and I took it into separate values. And what I'm looking for is basically what I'm trying to do. If I'm trying to get to the number with the formula, I need to know where the last space is, right? Because over here it's behind the last space, over here it's behind the last space, but it's not the, you know, it's not the first space over here, whereas here it is. So I need the last space. So I'm gonna do, tell me where this equals space. Nothing big over there. Now I could go, okay, now I got a bunch of 
trues and falses, let's change those into a bunch of zeros and ones. Okay, now that is cool. And if I now multiply that by exactly this, so this is just a list of numbers from one to where, however long that uh, address is. There it is. So now I have a bunch of zeros and I have numbers where spaces are. So if I now go and do a, give me a max of all this, that's exactly what I need, right? That is my last space. And now I can use that. Now I can go mid, start with that, take it from here plus one because I don't need the space and then just give me 100. And there it is. That's a formula that would do it. But that's also a formula that, you know, you don't see every day and you definitely don't write it every day. So if, <clears throat> you know, if you think about it, you either can write that formula or you can go, well, this should be 12. This should be 89. This should be four. And now, now you guessed it, enter. And that is it. That is flash fill for you. And, you know, I'm not gonna go into the whole flash fill thing. If you wanna know how I did that exactly, just look at the video up there. Um, but I'm hoping that you can see, I could do it like this, or I could do it with that formula. You know, it's your choice. I'm thinking in the intermediate or level 200, you're going to prefer this, right? Okay, but there is a difference. I want to point that out. This one, uh, if I change this into 17, that one wouldn't change. Whereas before, if when I did it with a formula, so let me just get back to that. When I had a formula, if I change this into 17, it would change. So there is a difference. Of course, formulas are, you know, something more. Um, but you know, having the ability to do it like this, brilliant, just brilliant. Okay, well, thank you for watching. So this was level 200. Coming up next, level 400. So seven tips and tricks, expert level or ninja level or whatever you want. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.